Hi everyone and welcome to my tutorial where I'll be showing you how to create this cool 3D type within After Effects using a really simple and easy technique. I'd really appreciate all your support so please hit the like button, pop a comment below and hit the subscribe button. And if you're interested check out my other videos where I talk in more detail about kinetic typography. So let's jump straight in and the first thing I'm going to do is create a new comp. And for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to make it uh, 16 by 9. So the width needs to be 1920 and the height 1080. We've got 25 frames here and 15 seconds is about right. So let's call this 3D type tutorial. And I'm just going to move my other comps out the way for now. Cool, so once we're here, we're gonna start off by creating one side of the 3D shape. And for the font, I'm gonna be using Adobe's font called Brilla. So I'm gonna type out 3D type, go over to my character window and find Brilla. So if you've got an Adobe Creative Cloud membership, then you can get this font for free through Adobe. Cool, and I'm gonna center this type. So go to paragraph, pop it in the middle and Let's make it about 70. And I'm just gonna pop that in the center by going to my align window down here. And then I'm gonna hit Y and move my anchor point from down here to up there. And now I'm going to press my type layer and pre-compose this into another comp. So I'm gonna press Command Shift C and that's gonna bring up my pre-compose window and we're gonna call this 3D type side. Lovely, and I'm just going to jump into that composition by double clicking it. And then I'm going to go down here and I'm going to use this button here, which is called region of interest. You'll see this plus button appear. And what that means is I can click and drag a box around my type. And if I go up to composition, I can go to crop comp to region of interest. And that way it's cropped the comp to the size of the type. And I can just hit the type button and realign that to the center of the composition. You can obviously do it a, a different way by bringing up the composition setting box by pressing command K and resizing it manually here. But this is a much quicker and easy way of doing that. So once I've set that up, I actually want to add a black solid background to this. So I'm going to right click in my uh, timeline and I'm going to go to new solid and my solid settings box will come up and I'm going to change the color to black. Okay, so move that to the bottom of my composition so the type is on top and to do that the shortcut was command shift uh, open brackets. Once I've done that I'm going to go back into my main composition so 3D type tutorial and here you'll see we've got one side of the 3D shape that we want to create and we want to create a 3D square so I'm going to create four sides to this so I'm going to press command D until I've got four sides. I'm gonna highlight them all and I'm gonna click the 3D layer here. And then I want to go down to um, my two views here. And once I click on here, you can see it says top. Um, so that's just simply saying that this is the top view and this default view is from the front. In the top view, I'm going to hold my first layer. That's in the right position. My second layer, I want that on the left-hand side here. So I'm gonna press R and that's gonna bring up my rotation tools here. And I'm just gonna rotate this by plus 90 and I'm gonna zoom in and move this up by I so that it's touching the first layer and I'm gonna move it out until it the corners are touching each other. So I might need to bring it down a bit. Yeah, and essentially in this top view, we want to create a square with all our sides in a 3D space. So I'll do that for, the, for my other sides, but this time the back, I want that facing 180 degrees and then we'll move that up. And this last layer, we want it facing 270 degrees and you'll see here that the blue arrow is pointing in the direction that the layer is facing so we know that this layer is facing outward and this layer is facing outward and this layer is facing outward so if we turn this around we'll always see 3d type in the right direction and not backwards or anything okay so once we have that set up we now want to add a null object so i'm going to right click in my timeline go to new null object and I'm gonna turn this into a 3D layer. 
And if I go into this 3D type side and I press Command K and I see that the width is 607. So I'm gonna divide that by two, which is 300 and let's say 303. And we move the null back by 303 in Z space. That will be perfectly in the middle of that layer. In fact, we should do it 303.5 to be exact. And that's exactly in the middle of all these layers. So if we connect all these layers to the null by highlighting all the layers and using the pick whip and dragging and dropping it onto the null object. So if we go back to our default view and rotate this round, we're going to see all the layers rotated but from the center of the rectangle rather than from the front because it will look very different if you if you do it that way. So let's add some keyframes in there. So I want to start this off as plus 45. So it starts from the center, add a keyframe and I'm gonna go to eight seconds and I'm gonna add a new keyframe that is one times 45 so that we loop this round. If I press N, that brings my timeline in to where my playhead is. So it will end at that point and just loop back around to the beginning. So now that we have this set up, I actually want to pre-compose all of this into one composition. So I'm gonna highlight all my layers, press Alt and uh, N bracket, and that's gonna end all my layers where my playhead is. And I'm gonna press Command Shift C, and I'm gonna call this 3D type motion. Okay, so I'm going to jump into this composition by double clicking it and I'm going to do the same thing and I'm going to crop the composition to the region of interest. So I'm going to get that tool up and I'm going to go over the layer. So if I do this at the very start of the composition, then it's going to be at the largest width that the uh, composition will be. So if I drag my region of interest at this point, then I'm going to make sure that all the content is within the composition. So I'm going to go up to composition and go crop comp to region of interest, click that and we've got it cropped. Now you can see here that my render is, it looks quite pixelated and that's because my uh, preview is on third. If I hit full, you can see that it's, it's back again. Now what I want to do to create that texture in the type, I'm actually going to add a spotlight to this. Now because all these layers are 3D, this spotlight is going to appear on these layers. If I was to use a 2D object behind there, then the spotlight wouldn't show up. So I'm gonna right click in my timeline and go to new light. And I've got light type here, which is spot and intensity. I'm gonna up this up to about 200. Cone angle, I think that's fine. Radius, so I wanna probably up this and the rest I think is fine, but let's double check that. So if I click okay, and you'll see, if I go into my two views from the top, you'll see that my light has appeared. So you'll see here that where the anchor point is, that's actually your point of interest. So if you move that, that is where your light uh, region of interest is. So that's where it's like looking at. And if I open up the layer, you see you've got point of interest, position, orientation. So if I move this so it's in the middle and then move the point of interest round, you see that it actually rotates itself when you move the point of interest because that's what it wants to look at. And just push this out a bit. And actually, I, if I go to my light options here and open that up, we might want to up these a bit. And you can see here, I've put fall off distance to 300 and that's actually made um, the light fall off on the letters just push out a little bit more. So if I press undo, you can see just a slight change there and then redo, it just gets a bit lighter. I'm actually gonna push this down so it's in the middle and push the region of interest up. Cool, and let's bring the intensity up a bit. There we go, so we've made that 300 and we've got this really sharp light in the middle and almost this gradient fall off on the edge. Now we want to animate this by changing the position of the light. So we want it to start in the middle, move to the left and then go all the way to the right and move back to the middle and repeat that process. The reason why we want to do that is so that we can have the light moving around and when we get to the main composition, if I go back to that, where this gradient is making the letters on either side of the shape kind of fall off and get this kind of cool gradient, um, the light is actually creating that for us. So where there's shadows on the type, we can then add this cool texture to it. So if I go back to this and let's start with a um, position keyframe. So I'm going to press Alt 
P at the start here. I press U to close the layer up and then I press U again to just show me the keyframe so it can concentrate on position. So let's move up to about one. So we, what we want to do is we want to see just before this layer here goes off the screen, we want our light to be over to the left. So about here and we'll move the light over to the right until the light starts to show some of this. And then by the time it gets to the middle, so we just see one 3D type, we want the light to move back over to the right. And we'll do the same again. So once it gets to the middle, so let's highlight all these keyframes and copy and paste them. Good, so let's move along until it's in the middle again and copy and paste the keyframes and do that until it's the end of the composition. So we just need to copy and paste that last keyframe there. And as you can see, the point of interest is not actually moving with it. So let's add some keyframes for that too. So if I bring down my layers and press point of interest and let's move that to here. And then we want it here and then we want it over here. And again, let's copy and paste those keyframes until we get to the end. Okay, so if I press one view and we play that through, we can see we're getting this gradient on the type as it's rotated around. So it looks like the type on the edges are darker um, until it gets bright in the middle where the light is hitting it. Cool, okay, so now we have our basic shape and our type. We're gonna move back to our main composition and I'm gonna press full again so we can see what we're doing. And I actually want to repeat this off the screen. So I want this repeated um, on either side of this layer. So I'm gonna go up to my effects and presets and I'm gonna type in R-E-P-E -E and CC Reptile should come up. And I want it to expand on the right by a thousand and on the left by a thousand too. Cool, and you can see here if I press play, it just repeats um, on either side of it. Cool, okay, and um, I want to also add a Gaussian blur to this. If I type blur in, and go down to here, Gaussian blur, add that on, and I want it to be about five. And the reason why I add a blur is because once you add the texture on top and the noise, it actually gives the edges a bit of texture as well, not just on top of the type, um, which I think looks a lot better rather than just sitting on top. You want the edges to feel like they're blending in as well. Cool, so once we have that, I want to duplicate this layer. So I'm gonna press Command D, drag that down. I'm gonna actually change the color here to yellow so that I can see that this layer is, is different to this layer. So the yellow one, I'm gonna move it down and I'm gonna move it to the right so the middle is where the middle of the layers meet. And I'm going to duplicate these until I fill out the screen. Cool, and once I have all of these duplicated out, I actually wanna make sure these are aligned properly. So if I hit the bottom one, and press the uh, align to the bottom here and press the top and press align to the top and then highlight all of them and distribute layers equally through vertical space. Then they are all positioned equally. Now I also want to offset these layers slightly. So I'm going to highlight them all and just offset each layer by one frame. Now in order to make sure that these loop perfectly, I'm gonna go to the end zoom into my timeline by pressing the plus button. I'm gonna highlight all my layers and I'm gonna press Command Shift D and that will split the layers. So from that point, so I'm gonna make sure it's at the very end so that this one isn't split as well. So Command Shift D and that's gonna split the end of my layer. So anything beyond this point, it's actually split it. So whilst it's highlighted, I'm gonna drag them all to the bottom and then I'm gonna drag all of these to the start of the timeline. Okay, and what that means is if we go to the end and we press play, that will all loop perfectly because we've cut the end off. Without those, if I actually turn off these layers, you'll see that they'll come on one by one because we've pushed each one back by a frame. So whatever was uh, left over at the end of my timeline here, cutting those off and adding those to the beginning, that means that we can loop the um, composition perfectly. Cool, so once we have that, we actually want to um, add an adjustment layer. So I'm gonna go to um, my preview window here and press right click, new adjustment layer, press Command Shift 
end bracket and it's going to push it up to the top of the composition for me. I'm going to go to my effects and presets window, I'm going to type in noise and I'm going to turn off uh, use colour noise and I'm going to add a 20% noise on top. And I'm also going to use a uh, textured overlay called Brown Paper Bag. I actually got this as a free download from Premium Beat, which I'll put a link to uh, down below. As well as this, there's actually lots of other textures in there, so it's a really useful download. So I'm going to grab this and put this in my layer. And as you can see here, it's immediately just taken up the screen. And if I zoom out, so I can press Command uh, minus, you'll see that it's actually quite big. So I'm going to shrink this down so it's the size of the comp and then press alt and question mark and it brings the comp to the size of the window and i'm going to set this as a mode of overlay and immediately you can see that there's some textures that are added but we can see the background of the uh, texture so what we want to do is we want to add a solid the size of the composition that's black so that it all blends in so if i press right click go to new solid and I've already got black selected, so press OK, press Command Shift and open bracket and push that to the bottom of the layer and you immediately fix that. So now we have uh, all our own elements in there. To get that extra gritty texture to the, the letters, we actually want to add some additional effects to our brown paper bag texture. So if I go to my effects and presets and type in invert, I'm going to drag that onto the layer and invert it. And then I'm going to go to levels. I'm going to add a levels effect to this. I'm going to really crunch down these dials so that we get rid of any of the color and we get some more texture coming through to play on that text. And you can play around with these settings until you get something that's right for you. Cool. And so once you're done with that, just to make sure that the texture is over all the letters, let's duplicate this layer by pressing Command D and dragging it and just pushing it across to the end. And that's how you create this 3D type within After Effects. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please hit the like button, add a comment below, and please hit the subscribe button. If you wanna check out some more of my videos on kinetic typography, then head over to my channel. Until next time, take care.